Hi, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper, coming to you from eight feet off the ground. And I want to talk to you about cutting. And what is cutting? Cutting is the process whereby you take a brush and you draw the line where your wall meets your ceiling or in your corners or on your baseboard down there. Okay, now when painters are cutting, they're, they're, they're cheating. A lot of them are cheating, and I see it all the time. They're not cutting twice, they're cutting once. So what they'll do is they'll take a very wet brush, and this is what they'll do. They'll, they'll wet the brush, and they'll pull it in one direction, which affords them the greatest chance that the color is going to stay in place. They'll just do one direction. Not good enough. Or you'll see other painters, they'll wet the brush up and here's what they'll do on the cut. They'll go in one direction and then they'll finish it off pulling the paintbrush all the way using only one coat of paint, but they'll go in two directions and then they'll finish it off. Well, when the paint dries, if you look close enough, especially where your walls meet the ceiling, you will see this. Now you can see it up close. Now watch this when you're far away and you're not a painter. Can you see it? Not really, right? But when you get up close, you can see it. But here's more likely what you'd see. That's one cut, one coat, and it's not good enough. And this is a worst case scenario because this is highly pigmented paint, brown. So you have to come around and cut again. And <clears throat> The paint that goes on with the brush is going to leave a different texture than the paint that goes on with the roller because one leaves a stippled effect while the other leaves a more smooth effect, right? So I'm drawing six inches of paint here, but when I roll, when I, when I finish it off with the roller, I'm going to bring that roller as far up to this ceiling as I possibly can. Okay, usually within an inch. <clears throat> because it's bad enough that the paint is going to look different because it was put on with a brush. So you want to eliminate that texture as much as possible so that the entire wall is unified in the texture with which the roller makes the paint. And so that's why you got to come real close to the ceiling with your roller. But that doesn't mean you can't go nice and wide with this brush. Don't worry, when the paint dries, you go right over it, creates a new surface. So second, and the third thing I want to mention is, especially on a textured ceiling or a textured wall, you can't get all the nooks and crannies on one pass. You just can't do it. When you put the first coat on and it dries, it's got to be dry so that the brush glides on the new surface. Then you can fill in those little areas that you missed. Don't try to get them all on the first pass. You're going to wind up drawing a crooked line. And so here we go. Here's my second pass. I just want to show it to you. Now, you don't feel it, but the brush is really smooth, smooth and it's, it's really moving nice and easily. And it's going to draw beautifully for me. See where it just goes right up to that and it tightens up the line? See that? There's no resistance because when I say resistance, the, br the brush isn't pulling the way it did on the first coat. It's not pulling at all. It's gliding. Why? Because I have a layer of paint under it. And that's the time I want to fill in all the little nooks and crannies that I missed on the first pass. So, 
if you're hiring a painter, this is what you want to say. How many coats do you do? He's going to say two. He'll always say two. Now, I agree with him that you don't have to do two coats on a white ceiling, unless it's black or some other color. But then you'll ask him, do you do two coats on your cuts? Invariably, he's going to say yes. And then this is what I want you to say. I want two coats on the cuts, and I want the first coat to be dry when you do it. He's not going to like it. He's not going to like you saying that. And if you're not watching him, I'm sorry, I venture to say that he's not going to do it. Because this takes time. This takes time. You know, uh, working is all about making money, right? I mean, this is why, this is why people are in the trade. It's also one of, the, one of the reasons why bad work has reduced, has denigrated the, the price of good labor. So you come in as a painter and you tell people that you want 25, 30% more than the guy who does a crap job. And they're like, you're crazy. They don't understand all of this. Some of them don't care. But the ones who do care about it, they wind up calling you back saying, can you come and fix this? It happened to me about five times in the year 2018. Can you come back? The guy messed up the wallpaper. You know what my answer is? No. I'm, I can't come back. Uh, you know, this is the way people learn lessons. And um, you don't want to be fixing anybody else's mess. So there you have it. I'm telling you what to do if you hire a painter. I'm, I'm suggesting to you what you do if you paint this yourself. Two passes and make sure the thing is dry. If you touch it and it's sticky, and paint doesn't come on your fingers, it's not dry. You, because then it's gonna pull the, the, the new brush, the, the new pass, it's gonna pull on it. You want the brush to glide. So you wanna give it minimally an hour to dry, maybe more. If it's resisting the brush on the second pass, stop. Because what's going to happen is you're gonna pull the paint off and then you're going to see through it. So you, you want it to be dry so that the second coat goes on as a second coat and stays, all right? So there you have it. I'll just show you a little more of this and then we'll, we'll be done with it. Again, my, my paint is nice and dry, right? I get it up in that corner. See, it's so nice. I mean, those of you who paint, you know what I'm talking about. You can see the, the brush just kind of push that paint and glide, right? If it doesn't glide, uh, you're going to wind up not doing a great job on this. Now, this is why you want an angled brush. Look at how the brush gets into this corner. Look at this. Look, see how I can just push it in there and stop at the ceiling and then pull down? Go right up again, look, pull down. With a, with a brush that is not angled, I can't do that. Maybe you can't see it, but my brush is a three inch angle sash brush. See that, how it just glides? Why is it gliding? Because I have a first coat on there that happens to be dry. Okay, so I want to unify it now. I want to bring all this in together, make all the color one. And you want to just go in one direction too. That's, <clears throat> that'll help you from pulling out the paint underneath it. You can go back and forth, but when you finish it off, let me just show you something about painting that you may not know. When you're painting something long, a long wall or whatever, or um, woodwork, check this out. Now this is drying over here, right? This part is drying, what I'm pointing at. So you're over here, right? Watch this. When I touch this paint over here, I can feel it pulling because the paint is starting to dry. So here's how you unify the wall. You, it's called keeping a wet edge. Just check this out, watch this. Put it back and forth. Then I just pull it over here and I lift the brush when it starts resisting, watch. I lift the brush when it starts resisting. I pull from the wet edge toward the, dry, toward the dry, not onto it. And then when I feel it resisting, I lift the brush. And this way, all the paint is drying at the same time, believe it or not. Yes, this will dry first when I get to all the way to the end of the wall, but it's drying at the same proportion is what I mean. So in other words, every time you leave a surface for the last time, having touched it the last time with the brush, 
you're generally having the same amount of time with the last, with the next surfaces that you're touching for the last time. And so you're never, dis, you're never disturbing the paint as it's drying because you're never passing it again. You're going from wet to where it's drying and then you just lift the brush, just like a plane takes off, okay? Do you understand that? Be this paint dries, it, it starts to set up after about two minutes on the wall, that's a long time. Unless you put a paint extender in there, no need to do it. And so this, I would not touch this because why? It's gonna alter the appearance, it's gonna put a texture on it, it's drying. Think about touching drying gum in the sun, on the ground, right? You step in it, you're pulling off, it looks like taffy, right? Same idea with the paint. You can touch it while it's wet, but after you've left it alone for about a minute, you only want to go, first of all, in one direction, and then you want to just join this, the wet, with the drying by lifting up where you feel the resistance, because that's where the paint is setting up. It's not dry yet, but it's setting up, and so you want to lift the brush, going in one direction toward the drying edge. That's how you unify all of your paint. It's called keeping a wet edge. And so you want it to be wet here, and you don't want to mess with it over here where it's drying. I hope that, I hope that clarified it. This is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. Thanks for watching my channel. Please click on like and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one.